Hello Flosstube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I want to welcome all of you to my channel. I'm very glad that you're here. So happy Needlework Expo weekend, everyone. This past week, it's been so exciting to follow the Needlework Expo um, page on Instagram and see the new releases um, from some of my favorite designers. Some are just sneak peeks. And to see all the excitement yesterday as the designers pre prepped um, for the opening of the expo to welcome people to their online shop. I know it's a big change for them as well as for us because it's all online this year, again, instead of um, being in Nashville. Um, nothing's the same as meeting your friends and laughing and sharing a meal or a cup of coffee um, during this time for them, but at the same time, I feel like I'm a little more a part of what's going on this year. Um, we've had the sneak peeks and, and the reveal photos like we normally do, but at the same time, um, the designers doing it this way, they're, they're um, posting about their excitement. We're seeing it from a different point of view this year because of COVID, um, but I do um, feel a little bit more a part of what's going on than normal since it is a wholesale show and so, you know, the, just the stitchers like you and I can't just pop over and visit this show. It's just for the shop owners, but we're seen to be interacting more with them this year, and I do like that. Um, other than that, this week, I have continued to work on my whips and my focus pieces. I have a fully finished piece to share with you, or actually two, and I have two focus pieces at the moment that I'm working on this month. I hope to have a finish on one or the other this, this month. And I have some plans for another uh, finish on, on a piece, um, a fully finished. So it's a piece that it has been completed some years ago and I wanna finish it up into something that I can use. So let's just jump right into it. So my current focus piece, the one that gets the most attention is the Brenda Keys Sampler Company. And this is a sampler story. And this is just the photo off the, um, off the pattern cover and as you can see there's a total of 24 squares my piece is stitched on 25 count one one thread over one linen thread with the call for DMC's and when you saw me last week I would had completed these four working on these two so I'm happy to report that I now have six squares out of the 24 finished and I also had the start on a seventh. So here you go. So these two here are the ones I was working on last weekend. I have dated this piece, as you can see around the tree, for 2021, so that means I have to finish it, right? And then I've made a small start here. And this is a church, excuse me. <laughs> This is a church and I got started on that. I did a little more of the outline of the boxes within the piece. Um, that's my most unfavorite part. So I've heard someone recently talk about eating the vegetables, which is doing the border. And so I'm doing the border of these boxes. And what I do is before I complete um, my last thread every night, or after I complete my last thread within the stitching, I will start a thread for the border. And you can see I've done that here. Last night, I ended right here. I went ahead and anchored that thread and stitched a few stitched of the, of the border. And so when I pick it up tonight, that means I'll finish, um, I'll work through one more thread of this border before I start the stitching of the church. And makes it a little easier, so I end and begin with a border stitching every evening before I begin, um, before I start working on my piece. And it works for me. It makes it something I can tackle. But this is so small, being stitched um, one over one on the 25 count, and I'm loving it. I haven't had to change up anything, or at least not changed up anything on purpose. Um, I do have a a little mistake in here, and it's just where I have one of the girls as one stitch over where she sh from where she should be, and I think I have a similar situation. I think the house is one uh, one thread 
longer than it needs to be. But, you know, I'm pointing that out, but you wouldn't know it. Um, the mistakes are hidden pretty well. So my goal this week will definitely be these little squares. Um, I'm gonna fold this up a little bit so I can hold it and be a little more manageable. These little squares actually take a little bit longer than I anticipated. Um, last week, my goal was to um, finish these two pieces by last weekend, and that just didn't happen. Um, I had finished this one, I think. I don't think I had completed either one of them. Um, but I know that I was working on this one at the beginning of this week. And I only get to work on them in the evenings. I do have a full-time job, so I work... Um, on my pieces, usually Tuesday through Friday. Monday is normally a long work day for me, and so I don't get um, much stitching in, maybe a thread or two at the most, if I stitch at all. And someone had asked me this week about how much I stitch in a day. And usually I'm home and dinner is done, and I have um, gotten ready for bed, meaning taking a bath and, and change into something more comfortable. And I may stitch for two to three hours, depending on, um, you know, just depending on the variables of how long uh, dinner takes to prep and clean up after, or how long my work day is. But generally about two to three hours on any given weeknight, unless we have something else going on. So with that being said, this week, um, my goal will be to finish the church and at least make a decent beginning on one more square. And I don't know where that square is going to be. I don't know if I'll drop down or move to the right of it, but um, there's that. And I'm stitching that piece with my friend Karen from Arizona. You may know her, Karen AZ, on Instagram. I'll link her below so you can check her out. Um, She's, a, she's been a friend for many years, a stitch friend. That's how I met her, is through stitching. And she has a sister that lives here locally, even though she lives in Arizona. So when she comes to visit her sister, um, I often get to see her as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing her this summer. This week, I also picked up an old whip. I shared this piece on my whip parade um, several videos back. And my friend Rhonda, I think she is stitching in the um, by the pond on Instagram. I'll link her below as well. She contacted me and said um, that she would like to, she, she had this piece as well, and we're, we're going to sell it. So that's, that's going to be fun. So we decided on March 1st to be the first day that we picked it up to stitch along. And let me show you the pattern picture. This is a by the bay piece. This is in my father's house. And again, um, it kind of dates this pattern as in these are the, the pictures that are in the pattern. So when I picked it up, I only had a couple of, uh, one of the words, let's see. I had there are and not even, I haven't finished are. So there and part of the word are. And I had completed a portion of this webbed looking tree here. That's so unique, I really like it. But I had started that. And with this one, I have only been working on it during the day at lunch. So if I come home at lunch, um, I do work relatively close to my home. I'm like eight minutes from home. And I will stitch a thread, maybe two, just at lunch break. And I've gotten a lot more accomplished this week than I thought. So once again, I picked it up on the first, and this is where I am. So I put in a couple more words, um, the word many and rooms, and finished up the word R. I finished up this tree and put the um, trunk of the tree in. And I started this tree, put in the trunk, but have not finished the branches on the tree. Um, so this is gonna be fun. I love this one and I'm looking forward to getting to that house. That's that's a lot of sticking, sticking, stitching. Well, sticking too, you're sticking your needle in the fabric. So that's a lot of stitching on that piece. Um, I, but I look forward to stitching the house. I really like these trees here that, that um, are up next to both left and right sides of the house. And that front lawn with all those little bright white sheep. So this is gonna be fun. 
So I look for, uh, forward to stitching along with this with Rhonda. And what else have we got? This is a piece, I don't even know when I stitched it. It's a small piece, it's a freebie piece. Um, it is a Lottie Daw freebie, and I will look at, see if it's still available. I'll look for it. If it is, I will list it below. Uh, but I attended a, a retreat with, with Karen, my friend Karen, and my friend Natasha. It was a PALS retreat in Myrtle, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, several years ago. And Natasha took, it was a wonderful idea. She took one of the freebie patterns, and she, it's only two colors. She chose a couple of colors of DMC and cut a piece of fabric for everyone, rolled it up, tied it with a bow, and we all had a small little project and kind of commemorates, I know exactly where I got it from, who I got it from, um, and it's such a great idea to gift a little prezi to your friends when you're attending a retreat together. So even though I don't remember the year that I attended the retreat, I do remember my table mates. So I'm gonna share this with you. I don't even know the name of it, but it says, a fallen leaf is summer's wave goodbye. So like I said, I'm, I'm almost 100% certain it was a Lottie Daw piece. And if it is, I'll find it if it's available and list it below. And I'm going to work to finish this into a project bag. So I'm gonna keep my fingers and stitches cross, uh, cross that I can figure out what I'm gonna do. I did pick out some fabrics last night. Um, I think this will be my outer fabric. It's just pumpkins. I'm gonna hold it up to the piece. So it's just pumpkins. And this will be the top portion, either the orange, I'm. I'm I'm liking both of them, so I'm not sure whether I'll use the brown at the top or the orange. And I have this fabric that I'm gonna use on the inner part of the, the pouch. So I'm look, looking forward to working on that probably later on today. Um, and then I also pulled some fabric to possibly do what, one more bag, or, or my goal is since I'm pulling everything down, I don't have my sewing machine out and available to me in my stitch room. So I have a dining room table and I drag everything downstairs and I set it up so to make all that effort, um, all those stairs that I'm climbing, <laughs> worthwhile when I bring my sewing machine out, I try to knock out several things. So these are um, the Pioneer Woman fabrics from Walmart that I purchased um, several months ago and shared with you. Um, this is a Pioneer Woman. This is a leftover from the last bag I made a couple weeks ago. This is some red fabric that I had, but this is the Pioneer Woman fabric. So I'm going to make another bag using those and possibly a third one. I had a finish this week and a full finish, which I will share with you in a moment, but this is the fabric I used to, ba to back it. And I bought just enough because I only needed a small piece to make the finish on the piece that I could make a bag out of it. And I picked up this polka dot fabric um, that I had upstairs in my stash and I'm gonna make a bag using these two. So that would make three bags, at least one. But I, if you've watched my channel for a while, um, my goal this year has been to knock down my whip number. Um, I will allow myself new starts. I haven't made one yet, but I will allow myself new starts, but I do want to get that whip number down. My second goal was to fully finish some of my finished pieces, meaning I'm a process stitcher. I just, in general, love to stitch. Um, in years past, and I say prior to Floss Tube, I'm very intimidated by the finishing aspect of stitching. I've bit that bullet the past year and a half and have been teaching myself, actively teaching, watching tutorial videos, learning, absorbing information, gathering tools for my tool belt so that I can learn to finish. So if in the last few videos, um, you'll see my finish on L-O-V-E squared by the Sweetheart Tree. So my goal this year, going back to that, is anything that I finish this year, especially as a small, is to fully finish it. 
as well as each month, pull two other finished pieces from my stash, my complete pile, completed pile, and fully finish those as well. So I'm going to share with you my two, um, my la latest two finishes this week. One is L-O-V-E Square by the Sweetheart Tree, which is a whip that I completed last weekend. And the other one is Floral Pincushion, Floral Pin Cushion Cup. It's a Sampler's Not Forgotten kit. And I had finished the stitching on it several months ago and just had not completed it into the cup that it was to be installed in. So I have a finish on both of those. So this is the floral pin cup. Now with the kit, um, there was a waxer. Um, I don't have that here with it, but I do have it upstairs too. When I, when I take it back up to display it, it will be with it. There were also some, some beaded, pins that will stick down into this pin cushion, but the the fab the um the piece was stitched several months ago. I want to say I finished it in mania last year. So I was doing a little mania, so I was starting things I knew I could finish within the month. So this is finished and installed. This ribbon, it came with it. Um, what I did is did a running stitch through the length of the ribbon, cinched it up. I didn't do it in any kind of precision or um, in a way where it was even symmetrical, anything like that. I just went with it. So as I tacked it down on the edges of the finished piece, as you can see, it's just... I like the way it flares out, just like a flower in nature. It's not always symmetrical. Um, I just installed it how, how it was on that ribbon it's with that running stitch. What I did was I took a piece of what I call chipboard. Anytime at work we go through a lot of notepads and things, the back piece off of the, the uh, notepad is chipboard. It's a harder, it's, it's not as soft as cardboard, it's a little more sturdy, and I will take two pieces of that, glue them together, and that's what I do pin cushions and things on. So um, the piece itself was, back, was backed with a Pellon stabilizer. I ironed that on. Um, then I put take, took two pieces of um, bat batting, I cut them out in a circular way. There's actually three pieces of batting beneath this. Um, they're all in descending sizes of circles. So of course the piece that is directly underneath the, the um, stitched piece here is the largest piece and then there's like a half dollar size piece beneath that and maybe a quarter size piece beneath that to give it just a little raise it up in the center um, but still give it that cushion and then I laced the piece onto the chipboard over the top of those pieces of batting. After I did that is when I took this ribbon, did the running stitch down it, and sewed this on the edges of that padded piece and put it into the cup. So that's how I did it. I love the colors. I think this is stitched on co Confederate gray, as well as this piece was, um, it was a kit, so the colors were, the th threads were included, and they were, um, um, the hand dyed bear, uh, the hand dyed threads. I don't remember if they were wheats or classic color, color works. And the cup as well come in with the kit. The other thing I finished was my L O V E squared. I finished it as a pin keep. If anyone can answer this question, I don't know what these things would be called. I knew in my mind what I wanted to use, and I have seen in shops before these rings but they would be the mother of pearl or the shell um, made from seashells. And when I look up rings, of course, on Google it, you get actual rings that you wear on your fingers. I tried jewelry making rings. Um, I visited Hobby Lobby. Um, the rings that they had there, 
all but this one were the rings like you would use on a keychain so that you can put your key on it so they had the indentation for you to slide the key on. These are the only ones I could find that suited my purposes. I also visited the area that would have the, um, everything you would need to install or to sew curtains. Um, they did have rings, but they were much larger than this. I wanted something small to fit the design that I was making, but I did find these at the jewelry making spot, but I don't know the actual name of them. So if I wanted to do a finish similar to this again, what are they called? Can anyone help me with that? If you can, just leave a comment below. But this one, I used a piece of ribbon and I just use regular pins. Let me see if this, can you see that? Regular pins to install it. I cut out two pieces of mat board. I cut them out within a half of an inch from the outside border of my piece. So I have two pieces. This piece again is just like I finished the pin cup. There are four squares, three squares of fabric on this. Three squares of fabric and they are in descending size. This, the one that's directly beneath this piece is larger and the other two go smaller so that it gives it a little bit. As you can see, it's raised up just a little bit and that's from the batting that's beneath it. Um, I did not lace this one. I actually used a Elmer spray glue to spray the, um, the mat board and then put the batting on there. I did not spray my stitched piece, so I can pull this apart and pull my stitched piece off. Um, I did lace that on top of the padded mat board. I did the same for both sides. So this one is raised as well. So this has three pieces of a square batting in descending size as well. Once they were sandwiched together, um, I sewed them, gathered them together. I sewed them on by hand, whip stitched the two pieces together just here on the edges twice. I went around the circumference. Oh, it wouldn't be circumference, but I went around um, the edges of this piece twice. I also took the time as when I attached this and I laced this this um, the stitch piece on, I made certain to go around the edges because I wanted the edges to pop. I've noticed that if I just attach it, there may be a wrinkle or a bunch of the fabric there in the corner. So I made sure to sew those edges together, the whip, the folds of the fabric together so that those um, would pop. And then when I was sandwiching the two pieces together, I paid close attention to the corners as well. So it took a few hours the easy part was installing the fabric and the stitch piece on the bat batting, I mean on, on the mat pieces. The longest that it took as far as completing this was just whipping the two pieces together. Um, but I love the way it turned out. I took the time to, to do the best of my ability with the best of the knowledge that I have to do it, and I'm very happy with it. After I whipped it together, I kept thinking of a better way. I was using the pins originally to hold the ribbon down so I could attempt to sew it. With this particular ribbon, it, the, the needle was piercing the ribbon and you could see, you know, even the pins was piercing the ribbon and you could see, so it was like it was damaging the ribbon and I didn't want it to look like that on the edges. And I did not want to do um, a cording. I have the cording drill and I just didn't want the look of that. So I decided just to put the regular pins. They slid easily in between the two because that is the gap between the two stitched piece or the two pieces. And then I hand sewed on these rings and took some similar colors because this was a kit as well. So I took some of the similar colors I had in my stash and just attached them to the rings. And I'm very happy with it. I did see this another, um, a lot of people said I was so creative. No, not really. <laughs> 
I found this, another stitcher, and I believe she was Russian, finished another piece similar to this, and it happened to be, I tagged it on Instagram so I could refer back to it. When I looked at it prior to finishing this up, I realized it was a sweetheart tree piece too. Not this specific one, but it was a sweetheart tree piece. Um, she had finished it similar to this. Um, I sandwiched two pieces together. This stitcher looks like she folded, her pe uh, linen piece was longer. She folded the piece over, uh, made it into like a flat, a flat pin cushion type thing and then attach these where, where mine is, of course, has mat board in it. Um, so I, and I often do that. I just take something I see, something that interests me, and kind of make it my own. But the inspiration for making a needle, um, a thread keep was not mine. I can't take credit for that. I can take credit for the way I finished this one but not for the idea itself. I borrowed that from someone else. And that's the great thing about the stitching community. Um, there's so many great crafters out there that are also stitchers and they have such great ideas. And you can use those as the basis to, you know, the foundation for your own pieces. You can build upon it and make it even your own. And that's, that's the good thing about this community. So. Um, I will actually see if I can. I don't think I've ever linked a specific Instagram post, but I will try. And if I can, I'll put it below so you can see that finish as well. I want to give credit where credit's due. And um, just because I've mentioned that, please do that. If, if, if you find an idea from somewhere else, it's okay to make it your own, but don't forget the person that you took the inspiration from. Um, I, I'm seeing more and more of that. People are taking ideas that um, I've seen other stitchers do before or that have come up with it, but um, just give credit where credit's due. If you get an idea from someone, it's okay to expand on it and make it your own, but where you got the initial idea, make sure you give that person credit. It, it's a good thing. Other than that, so this week I am, as I said, I'm gonna use my Lottie Da piece to make a bag and I'm hoping to make at least two bags today. I'm gonna to continue to work on my sampler story as well as continue to spend a couple of minutes on my lunch break to put a thread or two in the Bow the Bay in my father's house. I'll link both of those pieces below in my current works. And I think that's it. So if you have any questions, um, anything you think I can answer for you, just list them below. I want to thank you all for visiting with me today. I love reading the comments. I love interacting with all of you. I thank you all for watching. Some of you come back every week. I'm glad that you're here. I appreciate um, the support that you give me through watching these videos. But until next time, enjoy your week. Cross all the X's. Hugs and stitches. Bye-bye.